Hello, this is Nick Van Acker. Uh, I'm an educator at the MSU Museum. And today we're bringing you a quick fossil craft. We're going to be making model cryonoids, which look a little something like this. You can see they're, they're really cute. They look kind of like flowers. Um, it's a really fun and easy craft that only uses a few materials. So it should be really fun for you to craft along with us at home. So the first question you're probably wondering uh, is going to be, what is a cryonoid? Which is a fantastic question. And we're gonna talk a little bit about what cryonoids are before we get to the craft. So cryonoids, you actually might have seen before. I'm gonna pull up a picture of some cryonoids behind me. Um, they're a really common fossil that we find in Michigan. Um, you might've seen them if you're walking along a beach in Northern Michigan, you might've seen them in a museum. Um, but cryonoids are part of fossil animals that are left over from many millions of years ago when Michigan was covered in a nice warm tropical sea. Wouldn't it be nice if Michigan was still covered in a tropical sea? Unfortunately, we're not anymore. Um, but so usually when we find crinoids, we find them looking just like the ones back behind me here, or I have another one here in person, so you can see for scale. Um, these crinoids look kind of like cylinders, but of course the whole animal didn't look like a cylinder. This is only part of what the animal looked like. And so I can pull up another image to show you what the crinoids would have looked like when they were alive. Um, so all of the animals behind me that look kind of like flowers that are sticking up out of the ground, those are crinoids. Uh, crinoids were a really important part of our uh, landscape when Michigan was covered in this warm tropical sea. You can see it looked kind of like a coral reef today. Um, crinoids would act as filter feeders. So as the water would wash over them, they would use those tendrils to pick up all sort of little particles from the water that they could use to feed themselves. Um, so they were really important to the environment for kind of cleaning up all of the little uh, debris that was in the water. Um, and you can see that they were beautiful. They were all sorts of different colors we know from looking at the fossils that we can find today. Um, and of course, crinoids aren't actually extinct. There are still some crinoids in the ocean though you can still find in certain areas around the world. They're just not nearly as common as they used to be. And of course, we'll never find any in Michigan now because Michigan's no longer covered in a nice warm tropical ocean. But if you make these crinoid models, you can decorate your house just like the Michigan ocean floor used to be and maybe make Michigan look a little bit more like it used to millions of years ago. So this is a really easy craft and you only need a few materials. Um, you can make a whole bunch of these at once. So they're really easy. But all you're going to need is going to be an egg carton. Uh, you will need some pipe cleaners. If you can see them, there we go. Some pipe cleaners. You will need uh, either markers or paint. Paint is going to work better for this, but I only have markers available to me right now. And you'll also need a pair of scissors. And that's it. So uh, the first step that you're going to do is uh, something very easy as well. You're just basically going to separate your egg carton in half. You can take away the top. We won't need that for right now. We're only interested in the bottom bit that holds the eggs. And so once you've taken the top away, you're going to be left with this bottom bit that's got all these little bumps in there. I call these the egg holders. Um, and each egg holder is going to become one crinoid. So if you have a dozen eggs, you could make 12 crinoids. Um, so all you're going to do after you take the top off is going to be cut out each of these egg holders or however many crinoids you want to make from there. Um, so I've already cut away one, but we can cut away another one. And so once you cut away one of your egg holders, it will look something like this. Um, and you can see that on this egg holder, uh, it, on the bottom at least, it looks kind of like a square. And so there's gonna be four sides to your egg holder coming from each of those sides of the square. And so all that we're going to do is just make uh, two cuts on this so we can have those four sides separated into four little flaps. So make one cut, two cuts, and it will look something like this. Now, this next step is going to be uh, one of the most important steps. This is where you get to have a lot of fun. Uh, this is where you're going to be decorating your crinoid. So I only have markers. Like I said, uh, paint is going to work better for this just because it will create kind of a stronger color for your crinoid. Um, you can paint your crinoid or color your crinoid any color that you want to. This is your personal crinoid. It doesn't have to be scientifically accurate. Um, but all you're going to do is just paint or color all of the edges of the crinoid, including the edges that you just cut um, inside and outside, whatever color or design you choose. So I chose to make my crinoid a nice blue, just because I don't have any blue crinoids yet. Um, so once you've colored your, your crinoid or painted it and let it dry, then you're going to do a little bit more cutting. 
So we have those four flaps, remember, and what we're going to do is cut each of those flaps in half and then cut each of those flaps in half. So right now we have four flaps. We're going to cut each one in half. So we've got eight flaps and then we'll cut each of those in half. So we have 16 flaps. And of course, it doesn't matter if you're not able to create exactly 16 flaps or if you, you know, mess up, mess up a cut somewhere. Nature is not perfect. Uh, this is creating just an object for you. It doesn't have to be scientifically accurate. Um, but so we'll cut each of those flaps in half, like I said, so we've got eight, and then we'll cut each of those in half, so we've got 16. All right, so I am done cutting my flaps, um, and so you'll see that it's going to have all of these little individual flaps coming off from the bottom, just like the crinoids behind us. Um, the next step is going to be a little tricky, so if you're a child, you might want to ask an adult to help you, um, but what we're going to be doing is punching a hole in the bottom of our crinoid. So you can see on my egg carton, there's a little circle here already, um, so that's going to be my mark, but you'll just want to look for the center of your bottom and then uh, poke a hole in it. So I'm using a pair of scissors for this. Um, you can put your crinoid down flat on a table and just kind of push your scissors down into it, wiggle them around a little bit to get a hole. Um, you could also use something like a pencil or a thumbtack to get you started if that's helpful. Um, but I have the scissors with me already. So that's something I'm going to do. So we'll have a little hole in the bottom of our crinoid. Um, when you pushed it flat on the table, it should have kind of flattened out all of the, the tendrils coming out from your middle, which is great. That's exactly what we want. Um, if your crinoid's still a little carton shaped, you'll want to flatten all those out. So we've got just kind of a flat circle of crinoid. And of course, our last step is going to be adding a stem or as they're called in crinoids, stalks. Um, our stalk is gonna be made out of a pipe cleaner. Um, and this is the simplest step. All you're gonna do is poke your pipe cleaner through your hole that you just created. So you've got kind of what looks maybe like a flower right now. Um, and then you'll fold the pipe cleaner over a few times just to make sure that it's not going to go anywhere out of the hole. You can see I folded mine over a few times and then just kind of bent it over the hole. Um, it unfortunately blends it with my green screen. Um, but then you'll be able to have it kind of hold in place by itself and you have a completed crinoid at this point. Um, I have a whole forest of crinoids that I've already created, so I can kind of add mine to the forest. Um, something that's kind of fun, if you're interested, you can use another one of the egg holders as a base for your crinoids. Uh, you can poke a hole just in the top of that, but don't do any cutting. Um, you can color it though, of course. Um, and then you can poke all of the bottoms of the pipe cleaners through the hole. So you've got kind of a nice little crinoid base that you can set up somewhere. Um, so these crinoids are really, really fun. Um, they also act a lot like crinoids. They kind of will swing around in the water like they would be collecting all the nutrients from the water that we learned uh, them being filter feeders. Um, super simple craft to do, super fun. Um, so I hope you guys have a great time doing this craft and decorating your house to look a little bit like an ancient Michigan seafloor.